Hi, my name is Richard Duffy. I am the SAP Business One Product Evangelist. On behalf of everybody at SAP, I'd like to welcome you to the second of our presentations, which is covering the topics that we discussed with partners at our field kickoff meeting 2012, which as many of you know, were held uh, in four regions all around the world. In this presentation, I'm going to be focusing specifically on SAP Business One product related topics and talking about what we're doing from a product perspective that's going to deliver new opportunities for you, our partners with SAP Business One. I'm going to be covering some specific topics that are related to future developments with SAP Business One. So important to understand that you should not rely on this uh, presentation alone when you're making your planning decisions. I would encourage you make sure that you are in touch with your SAP Business One channel manager and your local product experts to validate any of the future statements that I'm going to make in today's presentation before you make uh, your plans about what you're doing from your business. Okay, so important to understand that. And of course, that's no different to any software company anywhere in the world. So let's talk about our, our roadmap. We have a clear and solid product roadmap for every single one of our releases that come out as part of our distinct release strategy. So whether it's our release family 8, 9 or 10, each one of those releases has a, a very, very clear product roadmap with the details provided of what's coming in that release and what our future plans are. But one thing's consistent is that we plan to deliver innovation to our customers without business disruption. We'll be having our major releases every two years with minor releases every six to nine months. So as an example of that, SAP Business One 8.8 .8 was released in 2010. 8.81 is now in general availability. We're in 2012 and 8.82 is now in ramp up. Release 9 will go into ramp up in Q4 of 2012. And then that will be followed by a 9.1 and a 9.2. And of course, then SAP Business One version 10 is currently planned for 2014. So it's very clear that we are offering a pathway to growth for the future. From a Business One perspective, we'll continue to focus on these innovations, as I said, innovations without disruption and innovations around four key areas, of course, around the core, then leveraging the technologies and the innovations that are consistent across the entire SAP product family, in memory, mobility, and cloud. From a core perspective though, you'll see us continuing to deliver enhancements in the core, and I'm gonna talk more about that in a second. And that core is supported with the Business One Studio, which is what you might be familiar uh, with as the uh, the Business One SDK together with some additional tools to make it even easier to build and deploy solutions. Our analytics today, which is powered by SAP Crystal Reports, Business Intelligence On Demand and uh, SAP Crystal Dashboard Design. Our future product, SAP Business One Analytics powered by SAP HANA. All of those core components, of course, built on top of and utilizing the SAP Business One Core and the integration framework, which is also then leveraged by our partners and of course by us at SAP to deliver add-ons and industry solutions, cloud-based extensions, web services and apps, as well as being able to integrate with networks for business to business, collaboration and business to consumer, and of course, our mobile solutions built on top of that integration framework. So that's the four key areas that we're gonna focus on. So let's now drill down in a little bit more detail. Business One 8.82, our current release that's in ramp up. We've got more than 20 sites who've gone live since the beginning of ramp up. And in fact, 
the ramp up and the product quality has been so strong that many of our mandatory countries have already achieved their minimum ramp up live sites. So those mandatory countries have to have a minimum number of customers go live before we can exit the ramp up. So our plan general availability for 8.82 is going to be in Q2 of 2012. So mark your calendar, uh, start thinking about Q2 and how this is going to impact on your product rollouts for your customers. Let's just quickly review again what our high level scope was for 8.82 for those of you who haven't really had a chance to drill down in a huge amount of detail. There were four key areas that we wanted to focus on. Enhancing our standard business scenarios to increase our business scenario coverage and legal compliance. Enhancing our reporting and analytics platform and the user experience. And again, that's around this concept of providing instant insight that allows our customers to take action. We want to continue to focus on reducing our total cost of ownership by enhancing the SDK and our supportability. And you've seen that with some of the things that we're doing around the remote support platform. And we've continued to enhance our infrastructure to improve the upgrade user experience and stability as well as performance. And I, I've got to tell you, as somebody who runs and manages a number of demo uh, infrastructure pieces with you know up to 40 or 50 databases, I have seen firsthand how well that upgrade wizard, those um, in infrastructure enhancements have been executed inside the product. So then let's break it down and start looking at it from an investment decision perspective because oftentimes people ask, well, how does SAP decide where they're going to invest in making changes and enhancements in the product? Well, there's four key areas, business logic and legal compliance, infrastructure and life cycle management, SDK and partner enablement, and reporting and analytics. Again, as I said, those same four points. So with 8.82, from a business logic and legal compliance perspective, we streamlined a lot of the out-of-the-box business processes like make to order and some MRP enhancements. We incorporated blanket agreements. We extended significantly the functionality of the CRM capabilities of SAP Business One with campaign management. Added the ability to do interest posting with Dunnings, credit memo enhancements, pick and pack enhancements and so on. We extended our country legal compliance and best practices, for example, with the extended tax reporting uh, in a number of countries around the world. And we did a lot of work to take some of those add-ons that provided legal compliance and merge those back into the business one core. From an infrastructure and life cycle management perspective, We've in enhanced the performance of the master data lookup and selection process. You know, our target was 50% and we've, we've really focused a lot on making sure we could deliver those performance enhancements. We've extended the capability of handling very large reports with some engine updates and engine enhancements. From an upgrade perspective, we've improved the upgrade experience by reducing downtime, improving the usability and performance to save cost and time for you as partners. Things like you know the pre-upgrade checks uh, and the way that entire upgrade wizard works. It's a phenomenal piece of work by the team building that. That automated upgrade of the Business One client and the add-ons for normal end users has been streamlined so there is a less downtime, less disruption and less need for the end user to be involved and engaged in that process. And we've reduced that client upgrade time by 50%. We've done new documentation for additional 120 error messages in the Business One client and we released the version 2.3 of the remote support platform to further automate that support and maintenance. And again, I would encourage you, if you are not using the remote support platform today, you are missing out on a huge opportunity to drive down your total cost of uh, uh, management for your SAP Business One customers and also to help them drive down their total cost of ownership. Let's then talk about our investment dimension around reports and analytics. We increased our Crystal reports content development efficiency by building in 
the ability to support multiple languages in one report template file. So if you are building multiple reports or if you're building reports for multiple countries, that's a huge advantage. We have addressed the customer needs of multiple company reporting as well by providing the ability for Crystal Reports to do multiple database support in a single report. We've enabled our customers to access their key performance indicators via the dashboard web access. And we've added more management dashboards for our customers, including C-level decision-making dashboards, purchase management, finance management dashboards, receivables management dashboards, sales management, sales analysis dashboards as well. So that will continue to be a key focus area for us going forwards. And of course, we haven't forgotten our software solution partners. We've enhanced the SDK and our solution packager to reduce the cost of that solution development and delivery done some enhancements to our user-defined objects and exposed more features to the DI API. And we're also helping you, our partners, to increase your profitability by shortening your time to value with those things like the solution packager and the data transfer workbench enhancements and also the configuration express. So if you haven't looked at those solutions for a while, I would encourage you go out and take a look at those, check out the training sessions and enablement sessions that we've done on those go out and view the delta training and familiarize yourself with those and see how you can utilize those to make your business more effective and more efficient let's talk about what's next from a business one 9.0 perspective what's our core focus here it's around enriching those business processes that we have today and functional features to achieve or exceed the level that our competitors are at we want to also improve the integration, increase the coverage of large account subsidiary integration because we have more than 1,500 large account subsidiaries or affiliates who are utilizing SAP Business One today. And we recognize that that is a core area where we have a particularly strong value proposition, so we want to enhance that. We want to make it easier to implement, customize, and extend the solution. And we're going to do more work around merging SAP add-ons into the core to reduce the product overhead. What's our timeline for version 9? Well, the version 9 release to customer is planned in October 2012, which of course is one year after release 8.82. Now again, remember, release to customer, that's what we talk about. That's when ramp up starts. So that major improvement in that business scenario enrichment, infrastructure enhancement and partner enablement will really kick in in you know, the November, December 2012 timeframe. So you can see a little bit of a map here of exactly how that works. So we're still in our development cycle for 9.0. Then we move into our acceptance testing, our validation and then our ramp up. So what are some of the highlights and major functional enhancements that are coming in SAP Business One 9.0. Well, because this is the next major release in our family, we're going to be addressing some of the top market requirements. Now, also important to note that this is a partial list of requirements and the scope is subject to change according to market feedback. But we're mainly focusing on further enhancing the key functions, improving integration, usability and extensibility. All right, same things as I said in the previous slide, but again, want to make sure it's very clear that you are able to understand and articulate what it is that Business One 9.0 is about. Business logic enhancements will include things like bin locations. I hear a number of you applauding um, loudly in the background. Multiple units of measurement. Uh, functionality enhancements around our price list stock counting processes. Enhancements around our serial and batch costing and fixed assets. Doing some work around country localizations and best practices for the countries where this applies, which is not every country, only some countries have this as a legal uh, legally permitted process, but you'll be able to cancel marketing documents, doing grossed up prices, deferring tax, uh, deferred tax enhancements, uh, international financial reporting standards. We'll also be doing work around enhancing that. 
from an infrastructure perspective 64-bit support which will enable you and your customers to take advantage of the next generation of hardware and operating systems for performance. Enhancing data privacy, continuing to do more work around optimizing our database locks which as many of you know are one of the areas in most transactional applications that can cause uh, performance issues is managing this contention amongst multiple users. Single sign-on, giving Business One users the ability to use their domain account to log on. Around the business infrastructure, doing more work around enhancing the mobile framework, and I'm going to do another presentation a little later on that was presented by our chief architect, Gao Peng, and I'm going to explain to you some of the things that we're doing around that. But also working in this concept of the implementation center. So taking that functionality and building it into, if you like, almost like work centers based on the tasks that are being done. More enhancements around the Business One Studio. We'll continue to do more multiple language enhancements from a reports and analytics perspective. We'll be re supporting the latest version of Crystal Reports 2011 and more. From an SDK perspective and a supportability perspective, doing more work around enhancing our upgrades. Again, more DI and UI API enhancements expanding the capability and functionality of the remote support platform and many of you will be aware that we're currently we currently have a framework that manages logging logging of errors logging of user activity we'll be doing some enhancements of that logging framework as well so they're the key things that we're going to focus on for version 9 so in summary what does this mean to you our partners and of course our customers well, it's about new opportunity, and that new opportunity is driven by the fact that we're able to increase our market competitiveness by extending those core business functions and capabilities that I talked about. You know, the inventory management, the banking and financials, that add-on merge back of things like fixed assets and interest at. Enhancing the infrastructure and reporting platform, adopting the 64-bit platform, improving our scalability and performance providing enhanced real-time reporting and analytics and of course extending our partner enablement and not just solution partner enablement with the Business One Studio but also around the implementation and supportability of the solution. So I hope you are as excited as we are at SAP about our product roadmap about what the, the, the product is going to bring to you in terms of new business opportunities I would encourage you to please make sure you go out and take the opportunity to learn more about these new solutions. I have a process that I like to call LEAP, L-E-A-P, which you can use when you are you know, thinking about these innovations and bringing them into your organization. So what is LEAP about? Learn, evangelize, adopt, and then propose. So first step in this is really about learning. So I encourage you go out to the channel partner portal, view the Delta training that's there, get in touch with your local product experts, keep your eyes open on our social media sites like YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, to make sure you're up to date and keeping on top of all the latest things that we're doing from a product perspective. So with that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. If you've got any specific questions about this presentation, you can reach out and contact me, Richard Duffy at richard.duffy at sap.com. Or of course, you can speak to your local product experts or your SAP Business One channel manager. Thank you.